Hello there and welcome to the ultimate guide to mixing flesh tones for portrait painting. Today's episode is going to be completely focused on how to mix flesh tones, okay? We're going to have a variety of different flesh tones. This video was inspired by all of the many comments that I've read uh, throughout the very long period of time of, uh, you know, folks just asking me how I mix flesh tone. It's taken me quite a while to figure out how to explain it, but in any case, let's get started with uh, the colors. So, we have titanium white, flake white, brown Burnt Umber, Alizarin Permanent, Cadmium Red, Yellow Ochre, Nickel Yellow, Sap Green, Ultramarine Blue, and Ivory Black. And if you are interested in purchasing the same types of oil paints that I'm using, I will have them linked in the description box down below with Amazon affiliate links. If you do decide to purchase the same kind of colors that I use, Amazon will pay me a small uh, amount in return. So thank you so much in advance if you decide to do that. So here we have light cool, light warm, middle cool, middle warm, dark cool, dark warm. These are suppose lighter flesh tones, okay? Middle flesh tones, mine would be kind of somewhere kind of in between light and middle. Then we have darker flesh tones, cool, darker flesh tones, warm. Now there are going to be many different varieties uh, in terms of the hue. So, you know, it could be light, cool, uh, you know, uh, red. It could be light, cool, tinted yellow. It could be light, cool, tinted sap green. There are so many different uh, variations of these flesh tone mixtures and can be kind of daunting at at times so i'm going to start off and explain each one of these mixtures step by step and just remember this does not mean you must always mix colors in this way this means that this is just a uh, you know a guide for you to look at in the future and uh, you know maybe even practice mixing colors along with me that would be pretty cool so let's start off with the first flesh tone so it's going to be titanium white and the nickel yellow. And it pretty much just looks like titanium white. Now here's the thing with flesh tone, okay? You almost never want to use straight up titanium white. And the reason you almost never want to do that is because you always want to leave room uh, to gauge your values. And if you're going to use something as bright as titanium white, maybe save it for jewelry or something like that. So this will, this one, excuse me, will go into the light warm. Okay. Now with the same mixture that we have here, uh, remember this was the titanium white and the nickel yellow. So titanium white, nickel yellow, and a little bit of sap green the tiniest bit of sap green. Okay, see how a tiny bit goes a long way. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some of the paint off with the paper towel. Now I'm gonna go into the flake white. So this is going to be for the light cool, this will actually be one of the more complicated flesh tones to, to mix. Light warm is usually the easiest, and with highlights, I typically stick with this one, which is the titanium white and the nickel yellow. So, what we have there is a little too green, almost like, a, I don't know, guacamole green or something like that. So, I wouldn't want to have this as the light cool. So, what am I going to do? Now, I'm faced with the, I uh, used the greenish. See, I used green, sap green, instead of ultramarine blue or even um, ivory black because that would have cooled way too much. So, the two colors that I like to mix a lot are the sap green and the alizarin permanent just a little bit of this just the tiniest bit and it's really nice to um, you know use a palette knife for these exercises just because um, a palette knife is so much easier to clean alright now we're getting somewhere though the hue is of course a little bit too warm still but again this is probably one of the more complicated flesh tones to mix. 
So now again, we're going to return to the sap green, okay? And now you see that we're starting to get a little more of a flesh-like color. See? There you go. Very much flesh-like color. It's almost similar to, um, you know, my skin tone a little bit. Okay, so with the same, you know, color that's on here, I know I just added a little bit of a... <laughs> Never mind, I'm just going to clean this off. I'm going to try to keep these mixtures fairly, um, you know, step by step. So now we're going to change the values as we move across for these flesh tones. So for instance, remember it was the titanium white, the flake white, the alizarin, the sap green, a little more sap green, and you usually wouldn't think about it, you know, mixing two complementaries, you know, like a red and a green, but they actually work quite nicely with flesh tone. Okay, so I know I just mixed a lot of stuff there, um, but here's the thing, when you're painting on your own, on your palette, I would recommend setting up a value scale, a flesh tone, very similar to what we're doing here. But of course, this is different because I'm explaining everything, you know, very, very much step by step, which is kind of difficult because color mixing, at least to me, is something that I try to, you know, keep as intuitive as possible. But in any case, what we have now is the same type of color as this but a little bit darker in value and so the secret really is the alizarin permanent now if you only have alizarin crimson uh, to be honest it pretty much works the same so your alizarin your sap green and then the white you don't have to have flake white if you don't want to it's just that uh, flake white this one right here has this property of which it allows you to use more of it without raising the value too much therefore you have a thicker consistency of paint but for these purposes it's not really that important because we're not actually applying this onto a painting but i want to have pretty much the um you know a color palette for you to to learn from that you can use for pretty much any skin tone i do think you can use this color palette for pretty much any skin tone so now we're going to go back to the warmer colors and um, this actually has a little bit of the uh, color that we had over here into the titanium white. So it is titanium white with the tiniest bit of the alizarin and the sap. But to make sure that that doesn't happen again, <laughs> I'm going to clean this off. And then I'm going to re reiterate what I just said. Sorry about that. So the titanium white tiniest bit of this alizarin tiniest bit of the sap green is what went into this but it's still too light so now for the light warm what i actually like to use uh, is burnt umber to go down in value i like to mix burnt umber and then now i'm going to start to go into yellow ochre okay more titanium white actually should have used flake white so flake white so now it's a little too yellow ochre ish um, so what I want is to make this instead of yellow I want it to be a little bit I don't know more orangey so I'm going to use the nickel yellow and now the tiniest bit of the cadmium red. And I'm not mixing anyone's skin tone in particular. Um, these are just skin tone combinations that I oftentimes use whether I'm thinking about it subconsciously or I just kind of feel out the mixtures. You're certainly welcome to make your own variations of these skin tones. So again, I, um, I use the cadmium red and the nickel yellow. Now I'm going to use a little more of the nickel yellow to make it a little bit less in the yellow ochre range. More flake white. I'm using the flake white to make the color lighter. 
but not um, like not too much if that makes any sense. Again, this is actually very complicated for me to to break this down, but uh, to me this just seems like the the best way. So now we have two uh, values, okay? A lighter one, a darker one. Lighter one, a darker one. This is light, flesh tone light cool. This is flesh tone light warm. And I think I'm going to mix a couple more of them. And now um, I'm going to just mix the color how I normally would. Uh, so without thinking about it too much. So the I, what I used there was the cadmium red, the nickel yellow, the sap green, titanium white, so I'm getting something that's a little bit darker at first and um, a little bit too warm for my uh, for what I want it to be light cool so now that's when I'm going to go into the sap green and sap green um, it's just like my favorite green I have used other greens like Viridian and um, uh, chrome green but I just tend to always go to sap green. It's not as strong of a green, it's a little more earthy. So that's kind of why I like to use it. Okay, so there you have a darker, uh, it's starting to get warmer a little bit. So again, a little more of the sap green. You know, somebody's probably gonna say that I'm just mixing mud, but in, in reality, I don't really believe in like, uh, you know, an ugly color. I don't believe in, um, I don't know, it's just my opinion. I don't think that any color is ugly. I just think that, uh, you know, if you can relate the colors properly to one another, you know, then you create color harmony within your portraits. And then, you know, a color such as this, which someone might say is like mud or something, goes very, very beautifully, you know, in a subtle half tone, maybe on the side plane of the nose or the maxilla or something like that on the face. So now we're going to go and mix another color. So going for the complementary colors, flake white. And yes, it is okay to use complementary colors to obtain flesh tones. So now with the burnt umber, remember this one didn't really have much burnt umber. So now a little bit more of the cadmium red, yellow ochre, nickel yellow, and while I have it, I'm going to, um, you know, the color on the palette knife, I'm going to just make it a little bit lighter. Now, this flesh tone is looking a little bit uh, too similar to this one, so I'm going to use a little bit of the cadmium red and the nickel yellow. And again, just bear with me because I'm coming up with these mixtures on the spot. A little more of the nickel yellow. Nickel yellow is a recent addition to my palette, but I like to use it because it's, um, I find it to be not as strong in terms of its uh, chroma as compared to a, you know, a cadmium yellow lemon or something like that. Okay, all right, so that is the warmer. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, to be honest. Um, I can try to change the sensitivity on the camera uh, but you know it's that's just the best that I can do with the lighting that I have and I'm gonna go ahead how about we mix a, another one so the burnt umber alizarin permanent yellow ochre and I'm just gonna go all the way across until I'm done mixing these colors now you see that I'm moving much more quickly, so feel free to pause the video uh, or go back and scroll through it to see how I mixed particular flesh tones. I go back to this one here, make it a little bit lighter. The nickel yellow.
And this one is just a darker version of this one. Now we're going to return up here. So for the light cool. They're going to get very close to one another, okay? The darker they get. It's really in the middle tones, I think, somewhere around here that you really see the difference in the, uh, the colors themselves. So again, with the complementary colors. Okay, so light cool is definitely not something I'm used to with flesh tone. It's starting to look a little bit like makeup. But I mean, makeup is kind of, you know, usually <laughs> very similar to skin tones anyway. So now I'm making it a little bit darker. See how they're gonna be very, very similar, but this one is just a touch cooler. It has a little bit more of the yellow ochre. Now, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five. I don't know, let's go for seven with these. So that would be six. So this is number six. And then number seven will be pretty much mostly just burnt umber at this point. This is light cool. So burnt umber with yellow, sorry, uh, with sap green. Now we'll use the ultramarine and a little bit of the ivory black. This is a very different Wednesday video, isn't it? So the cadmium red. So now for light warm, we're going to use a little more burnt umber. And if you're wondering what I'm going to do with these colors when I'm done, <laughs> um, just to not waste paint, I'll probably just use them uh, when I return to work in my uh, studio paintings. And if you would like to see my studio paintings, uh, please feel free to check out my Instagram account. I post there regularly. And in any case, for the darker color, I'm going to stick with um, a little more of the alizarin. And of course, sap. A little bit of ivory black. And one thing, you know, if I go too dark anywhere, uh, rather than using, uh, you know, white to lighten it, I'll actually use a yellow, whether it be this one or this one. See how with the yellow I can lighten it. Now I'm going to have to make it warmer again. So really, you have to kind of learn how to gauge your colors. This is definitely a video I would recommend uh, re-watching a couple times. You know, just by observing me mix the colors, you'll probably get a better sense of how I go about approaching the, a certain color. So a little more of the alizarin permanent. Okay, all right, so now we're going to move down uh, to middle cool so yellow ochre cadmium red sap green so now we're going to get into um, you know your kind of warmer darker flesh tones a little more sap green i'm probably not going to stick with these lines so um you know once we finally get to the uh, the bottom <laughs> it'll make more sense. Meaning, you know, this is now middle cool, even though it looks like it's next to middle warm. Maybe I'll adjust it later. But in any case, I'll explain what I'm doing. Uh, so I'm using the sap green, the, uh, the nickel yellow. More of the cadmium red. And these are for flesh tones um, for folks like me. My family is from Peru, so it's probably um, somewhere around my color. A little tip with uh, 
flesh tones and portraits, you usually get the truest color, uh, you know, like the local flesh tone of a person in the middle tones and the half tones. And in the lighter lights, not so much. The lighter lights are usually kind of mostly affected by the light source. So remember, you have um, you have local color, the color that something is, like a basketball is orange to some extent. Uh, and then you have, um, you know, the condition of the light, which will alter it. Okay, so this is going to be middle cool, okay? It's going to be a little bit darker than this light. And it's going to be a little bit warmer. There we go. So that's closer to what you would think of, uh, you know, with a textbook flesh tone. Now I'm going to mix the darker one, uh, middle warm, or sorry, the warmer one. All right, so cadmium red, nickel yellow, this is much more complicated than I thought. But, you know, after practicing doing these flesh tones, I strongly recommend uh, you rewatch one of my other videos. And if you just scroll through my uh, any of my other videos where I have the palette on the side, you will see that I do very similar types of mixtures when I'm painting. It's just when I'm painting and talking, I don't really get to talk about the flesh tones as much just because, I, you know, I have so much to focus on, the drawing, the composition, uh, you know, the values and all of that. So I don't really get to talk too much about, um, you know, how I go about approaching a color. So in any case, let's actually explain the color. So um, this is going to be middle warm. So I want it to be similar to the value uh, that we have here, but a little bit warmer. Okay, so a little more of the flake white. And if you don't want to use flake white, um, Gamblin sells a, a flake white replacement that is pretty much almost nearly the same thing. I mean, it feels almost like the same thing. Okay. All right, so this color is going to be very similar to this color, so I have to be very careful not to repeat certain colors. So all in all, these colors, the middle ones, the ones with the M, are going to be darker darker flesh tones. All right, so now let's go ahead and mix the colors. So burnt umber, alizarin. I'm gonna just uh, completely fill out the warmer ones just so we move a little faster. So that was with the alizarin and the yellow ochre to get this darker tone. Now we're gonna keep going. At a certain point, I need to stand back and make sure my camera is still recording. All right, so now similar mixtures, the um, alizarin, the yellow ochre. And I re highly recommend getting used to your colors. You know, um, for instance, I know that burnt umber and yellow ochre go together very nicely. And I know that alizarin and sap green go together very nicely. Colors that don't go together very nicely with flesh tones would be, I don't know, ultramarine blue and uh, titanium white. That would get me a little bit too much of a zombie type look. So now we're going to make it darker. Okay, I'm going to stand back, make sure the camera's still rolling. All right, so it looks like the camera is still going. So we're going to, again, mix the complementary. So cadmium red, sap green. And this is pretty much as complementary as you can get. And I recommend when painting, uh, try to use less as a, a little medium as possible just because uh, you know it just looks better when you have more paint I think so let's go ahead and put another tone so the burnt umber and now I'm pretty much just going to stick with um, burnt umber Lizarin. So these flesh tones 
are going to get much darker than these. So now again, Burnt Umber, Alizarin, Ivory Black. Now let's go ahead and mix these. Gonna clean off the, the palette knife. So the Flake White, Yellow Ochre. So these are gonna be Middle Cool which I think is gonna be kind of complicated. So these are gonna be more of the greenish tones. And I usually see a lot of greenish tones in like, um, you know, the half tones, maybe for the orbicularis oris beneath the, you know, the planes beneath the mouth. That's where I kind of see these mixtures. You know, and I think with middle cool, we're going to use a variation of uh, alizarin and sap. So if you don't have sap green on your portrait palette, I would highly recommend it. So these are gonna be very greenish colors. These certainly wouldn't ever be seen anywhere other than probably, you know, the side plane um, of the orbicularis oris beneath the, the mouth. Maybe as a tone transitions into the, the hair So I don't know why I just went into the uh, a warmer color. I'm just, I think I'm pretty much just gonna stick with the sap green, the alizarin, burnt umber, more burnt umber, sap green. Nickel yellow. Burnt Umber, Sap Green, Nickel Yellow, Ultramarine Blue. You'll see, you'll notice how rarely I actually use colors like Ultramarine Blue, but um, they do, they, they are necessary at a certain point, and I'm speaking of combinations that involve um, Ultramarine Blue. All right, so with the ivory black, a little bit of the nickel yellow, and I think we're good with that. Now we're going to move on down to the darker cool. So darker cool is going to be, again, like these colors, but a little bit darker. So let's go ahead and mix the burnt umber and the yellow ochre. Burnt umber, Yellow ochre and nickel yellow. Flake white. And the sap green. More burnt umber. Pretty much just erased that. Let's just fix this. All right, so remember this was light cool, light warm, middle cool, middle warm. So this is going to be dark, cool, dark, warm. Okay, all right, so let's get back to those mixtures. The alizarin, nickel yellow, so that is Still a little too warm, so a little more of the sap green. And actually a little bit of ultramarine blue. You will end up using more of your more blue and green tones in here. Okay, all right, so now I'm going to start to move the values. So it's gonna get darker. So burnt umber. And I tell you what, after I mix all of these together, I'm gonna to go ahead and retouch the colors just so there's a little more of a clean gradation of value. So again, a lot of sap green and burnt umber going into these mixtures. Yellow ochre, nickel yellow, alizarin, sap, 
a little more sap, a little more alizarin. Alizarin, sap, ultramarine, burnt umber. Now we're going to keep getting darker, so burnt umber. Ivory black, alizarin, ultramarine. Now ultramarine. Ivory black, burnt umber. You want to use burnt umber with ivory black most of the time just to ensure that you don't uh, use straight black. Just like um, not using straight white, I would advise against using straight ivory black um, just because you want your values to be a little more, um, you know, compressed within the, uh, the value range on the face. And if need be, you know, maybe in the corner of the accent of the bottom of the ear or something as it approaches the uh, the hair or something like that. In some obscure place you can put in just the ivory black. But just make sure not to uh, you know put too dark of tones too early on. Now we're going to move into dark warm so I'm going to clean off the palette knife first with the uh, good old paper towel. Yellow ochre. Alizarin. Burnt umber. Nickel yellow. Okay, all right, so now burnt umber. Alizarin. Nickel yellow. Now with the darker warm tones, hopefully this is still in the screen. Yes, still in the screen. So with the darker warm tones, I would watch out with uh, using too much of the titanium white. I would stick with more of the flake white. So flake white, yellow ochre, alizarin, sap, alizarin, ultra, So a little bit more of the nickel yellow, sap, ultra, burnt umber, alizarin, Okay, so now we're going to get even darker. Notice that I'm letting what's on the palette knife uh, influence the mixtures. That's just a way for me to kind of shortcut these mixtures. And you'll, you'll learn how to do this with the brush. You know, sometimes you don't have to clean off the brush. You'll just use what's already on the brush to alter a certain color or value just a little bit. So the... Um, this is mainly going to be uh, ultramarine blue, ivory black, and um, alizarin for that tone. All right, so now that we have the, uh, the colors all filled out, I'm going to now return to um, where I started. So over here, just to make sure that the values are working out. So this is what I mean by um, you know, adjusting the values. So what I'm gonna do is something that I tend to call a composite mixture, a composite color, meaning one color combination that's already a mixture of existing color combinations, such as what we have on the palette knife, okay? So I took a little bit of this color, okay? Now it's going to go into here. Now take a little bit of what's in this color. Now it's going to go into here. And in that way, I'm now adding more subtlety to the color. Now what's in here, I'm going to put in this color. Okay, this is perfectly acceptable. You don't have to reinvent the wheel each time, so to speak, that you're um, 
mixing your flesh tones. You, ju you just don't. So, now we have another color there. And again, taking what was already on here, see how we're getting a much cleaner gradation of tone. And these are composite flesh tone mixtures. These are composite color mixtures, meaning mixtures composed of colors that have already been mixed. So I took this one and then I just gradually mixed it, remixed it, <laughs> remix, remixed it into these colors. Okay, now we're gonna do that all over again. So we're gonna create another composite flesh tone mixture, starting off with this one for the light warm. This might be too much, so a little bit, I'm gonna take a little bit of, of it off. And now we're gonna do the same here. Composite flesh tone mixtures, okay? So again, I'm taking mixtures that I made originally from scratch and now combining them into pre-existing color mixtures, okay? Now I'm going to be a little more cautious with this one. This value is a little too similar to that one, but it, it'll pass. This is a good way to get acclimated to your palette knife. You know, if you've never done an exercise like this. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing here. Again, composite color mixtures. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing with this color. Okay, now I'm going to clean off the palette knife and I'm going to repeat. Okay, so admittingly, this one isn't really changing as much. So I'm going to take a little bit more of this color. There we go. Now we're going to get the gradation of tone. Hopefully. What this all is essentially are color value webs. Each one of these basically would, uh, you know, work as a color value web. And if you're new to this channel and you've never heard the term color value web, it's a term that I use for uh, when you organize flesh tones on your palette, going from lightest to darkest. And then sometimes you can also adjust it uh, with warmer and cooler flesh tones, or sometimes based on hue. Uh, you know, you can make some more red, others more pink, if you're painting areas like the lips or something like that. Now just cleaning off the, the palette knife again. We're going to create another composite color mixture. Now these I would consider to be the more advanced colors here all in this band of color mixture, okay? It's really it's really easy to um, make all of your skin tones look the same with a lot of your paintings. I'm certainly, uh, I've certainly done that a lot, not intentionally, but you know, after just, to be, to be frank, after just looking at pictures of my paintings on Instagram or uh, you know, after editing the videos on YouTube, I noticed a trend. I noticed a trend after a while that I was just, uh, you know, making the colors too similar with the flesh tones. In the beginning, I would linger a little too much in this area. And then I, eventually I started, uh, you know, experimenting with adding different colors to my palette to get different effects. And that's why you see now the, um, the nickel yellow, just to get me away from that kind of uh, you know orangey pink what my uh, 
teacher friend Paulden would tell me that I would mix too similar of a band-aid color uh, for my flesh tone. So now hopefully with the addition of this color, I have some more, uh, you know, subtlety in my flesh tones. So now let's continue making those composite color mixtures. And I, I wasn't kidding when I said that this color palette that I, I'm showing you here can pretty much mix up almost any skin tone. And I'm kind of referring to local skin tone, okay? It'll look different, skin tones will look different, uh, you know, if you're painting someone that's in the beach or something like that, or maybe they're in daylight, you know, natural light, they'd probably be here. But in, like, if they were at a beach or something, or, you know, in direct sunlight, there would be much more of an orangey tint to their flesh tones, where you would use a little bit of these colors. So now let's just mix these colors up. Let's get our composite flesh tones. And there you go. And I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit. I noticed that these mixtures started going off camera a little bit. And with that being said, I really do hope that this flesh tone mixing tutorial helps you out. I do recommend that you practice creating these mixtures and hey, you can always go back into them just like this and adjust them easily however you want, okay? I just want you to, to know that, you know, you don't have to necessarily have a recipe for how to mix colors, how to mix flesh tones, okay? There doesn't really need to be a recipe. You can use many different, you know, colors to get to this point, or you can use fewer colors to get to this point, or to get to that point, or there, or so on and so forth, okay? Just know that you don't have to have a designated recipe. This episode was to guide you step by step throughout all of these different flesh tone combinations. That being said, like I said already, <laughs> I really do hope that today's episode helps you out. I know that it's a little bit different since I didn't do a drawing demo or a painting demo, but I thought, you know, it, it was time. It was time to create a video like this one. And I hope that organizing it with these um, uh, labels over here helped you out, you know, helped you understand, you know, going from uh, lighter values to darker values, lighter flesh tones, middle flesh tones, darker flesh tones, uh, cooler flesh tones, warmer flesh tones, and then the composite color mixtures. I know it can be kind of complicated, but trust me, after a while, you will be able to create these mixtures without thinking too much about it. And always remember, in a world that can be so negative, be the spark that ignites positivity among all of us. I truly hope that you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you again on the next episode. I actually decided to take the colors from here and, and save them by applying them onto a separate piece of canvas. And I'll actually use this uh, to help out my students in my portrait painting class which will actually start up in September, on September 9th. And I will be teaching it in Howard County, Maryland. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description box down below. And hopefully YouTube doesn't demonetize the video for that, but I guess that is to be seen. And of course, I didn't count right. <laughs> I meant to have seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And of course, you probably already noticed this. One, two, three, four, five, six, what? Yeah, <laughs> I messed up with the counting there. So, uh, since I do intend to use this as a, a reference, I don't know, like a teaching tool for my portrait classes, always remember, when in doubt, blur it out. So what I'm gonna do is with a brush, a clean brush, I'm going to combine all of these colors together. I guess this means I have to clean a brush now, but oh well. So now we're gonna have color value webs. So let me do this with the rest of them.